For many, it's the game of the weekend. Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid. Absolutely huge game of football. And if you are a cynical human being, you might put forward the idea that these are the two remaining title contenders. But Girona, <laughs> of course, are currently top of the league. Are we going to give them, the, them their flowers, Bibber? Or, or is, it, is it down to these two? Are they going to fall away? The baby's shaking his head. You have to give Jordan their flowers. You can never skip out on the underdog here. They're sitting pretty at the top of the table and have been. So you cannot just go on history and be like, the Giants, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid and completely forget about Girona. But obviously this is one of the biggest games of the weekend. The said it's the game of the weekend. It is, it is um, huge, But yeah, it? it's huge. But um, you, yeah, there's so much to play for in this game, like you've mentioned. But for me, I'm not I'm not slipping out on Girona. No. Or well, the game after as well. So, you know. Yeah, they've got them next. By the 11th of February, Girona's title race is done. Wow. Exactly. Wow. It's done. It's so yeah, bold. Yeah, so one a week. <laughs> 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 there it is. <laughs> it is. Um, clip that up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you this question in a second. Because you're a data guy to some extent. I get thrown that at me a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. I try to back up what I'm saying with someone else's opinion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or numbers. <laughs> They're running extremely hot. And I said before we started recording, it's not a carbon copy of that Leicester season, but if you think back to that Leicester season when Vardy was running extremely hot, Girona are in that situation. Their XG is... It's, it's not sustainable. It's not allowed. Like it, it, This is a proper data debunker. So I just feel like it's going to come to a point where it has to crash. Um, and as I said... I know you share the same sentiment. Yeah, I think it's it's half and half. I, I agree. I, I I think they are running hot. Um, that's in open play in particular, um, which is kind of where I go to first. But I, I do. I would also suggest that the style of play that they're playing is so different to Leicester City's. Mm. Like they they have the ball and 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 it's new and it's exciting. And I also think I think Real Madrid there will be an element here where they will go like Leicester. They go. They'll, they'll drift away in a minute. Mm. They'll drift away. You know, they'll, they'll have that sort of nubade mentality. <laughs> and that can be dangerous. That can be really, yeah. really dangerous. Um, let's get on to this game because I think Atletico Madrid need to be discussed. They've made a huge change. Diego Simeone, for so long, 4 4 2. That's how it works. But he's changed it. It needed to work this year. He's obviously been there a very, very long time. But to, to allow it to evolve and to get where they are. You know, they had some games where they, they drew um, they drew nil nil. Then they won seven nil when they were sort of starting to get this back three sort of working. They've had different ways of playing it. You know, five three two or a three five two or a three whatever you want to do. But it's working now. They are like they're starting to cook a bit, aren't they? I think there's a two elements to this. One, the Simeone before this version was very pragmatic. They did not want the ball. Even against teams like Girona, for example, you'd normally expect Atletico to just keep giving the ball back. What they've done this season is they've kept that mentality off uh, off the ball. They still defend in a very low block when they're not in possession. But then when they're in possession, they're much more progressive and they build up a lot slower than they used to do. Before it'd be, can we hit the channels or can we hit Griezmann or can we hit our striker? And then can our midfielders overload the forward areas? Now they'll give it into Saul, they'll pop it out to Lorente and they can wilt teams down as well. That transformation for Diego Simeone is as good as any that I've seen because he's still using a very similar crop of players. It's not like he's gone, give me 11 new players, I need to fix an entire mm. system. It's fascinating that such a pragmatic coach can do this as well. Yeah, totally. And the players are, you know, to go to a back three, I think previously what Simeone did really well is he, he got players and he played them in the positions they wanted to play in and they and, and they felt kind of safe in, in doing that. But now, you know, Ronaldo was a left back. Uh, Witzel was obviously a centre midfielder for a long time. Um, you've got a lot of players playing in very different positions. And the front line, I think, is really, really yeah. interesting mm -hmm. as well because you've got... You've got players with a bit of history here. Correa's been there for a long time and he's a great sort of um, soldier for this squad. But very different, a bit more of an all-rounder to Depay, who's very different to Griezmann, who's very different to Morata. And Morata is killing it this year. <laughs> he's absolutely killing it. And I think just turning that dial that little bit more, where previously you had, a, you had a back four and they stayed back. It wasn't two at the back and those other guys mm. bombing on. By having the three, it's just that little bit more um, uh, higher up the pitch and Griezmann or Depay doing what they want to do. Um, Morata, we're not sure if he's going to be available for this one or not. And Depay, who'd had a bad start to the season, overall his numbers aren't great, six goals and one assist. But in the last uh, five games, he's been um, fantastic for them. So he'll come in and that would be, you know, that's an OK way to move forward. Let's get to Real Madrid. Let's get to the boy Bellingham. 
Ooh, who we star, love on this show. Star boy. <laughs> Absolutely love. Him and Vinicius Jr. And the way that they've set up this year, you know, it's been one where I think Real Madrid had Bellingham coming into the team and you thought he's going to be maybe a left-sided box-to-box midfielder. What are you going to do with him? He's kind of made, he's created a structure for them and it's kind of working with the split strikers of Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. Um, but it is also a slightly sort of odd, weird formation for for any team to play, really. Yeah. Um, how do you think that they can progress as the season goes on? Do you think they'll continue to be absolutely fine and, and, and walk away with this title? And, and if so, do you think it'd be down to Bellingham continuing to score? Or do you think Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo can step up a little bit more? I feel like with the added pressure of having, having a young player like Bellingham step into the squad and become this ultimate... Well, is it ultimate superstar? It's too soon to, yeah. too soon to say that. I feel yeah, like he's past that, yeah, that already. Is, yeah. I feel like that adds so much pressure to anyone, no matter how old you are, no matter how long you've been playing. And to be playing at one of the giant clubs at Real Madrid, that add so much pressure to Vinicius Junior where we've seen him not say drop off a bit but we've not seen him hit the heights we expect to see this season I mean to see a midfielder come in and Bellingham have so much more goals than Vinicius Junior mm. um, and Rodrigo it, it adds the pressure but then that should be a motivation for them to say right we're halfway through the season now this is where we are we're, we're, we're fighting for that title we've got a few not a few games but we've got these big games coming up and we've already got the super cover like this for them now is their moment to kick in yeah and and with Bellingham 18 goals 8 assists Vinicius yeah. Junior 11 goals I think at the start of the season That's we would have gone Benzema's gone mm. it's, it's, it's you now it's, just like, it's, yeah. it's your time to sort of turn the dial up and we're starting to see it a little bit would you say? I think there's been a turn of form at the start of the season he had a lot of issues on the pitch if you remember with the, the racism yeah. that the fans were throwing at him and I think that obviously affected him a little bit but then also they had a change if you think about Madrid before Bellingham, it was Benzema and Vinicius. Mm. And a lot of the times, Vinicius' main provider was Benzema just dropping it into him or just poking it in behind. Jude came along and said, I'm a striker playing in the Because <laughs> he spends all his time in and around the penalty area. Yeah. And for a lot of the time, Vinicius is actually being asked to float balls into Jude or play into Jude. And Jude isn't this player that when you fizz it into him, he's going to pop it back to you. He gets it in turns. And mm. as a winger, you're going... Ah, like that's me. That's how yeah. Vinicius plays. It's a one, one, two, and go. So I think he's lost a bit of his game because of that. But it's fascinating to see again how he's adapting. Um, and I can't imagine how difficult it is to play with Jude because Vinicius probably thought he was high, he was the higher to the throne, yeah. and Jude's come along and the throne's not going to be dethroned for a long, no. long time. And you see that in the change of tempo uh, w- with the team because there is, you know, I love average positions. And if you look at that, they are so set in their place because they just love a little bounce pass here and there. Um, and Jude Bellingham, I was looking at his stats, a recent game, 118 uh, touches, I think it was. Or is it touches or passes? I'm getting confused now. In but the box or the game? touching the ball, no, in the game. In the game, yeah. Which is just like, over 100 touches is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. Ridiculous. Um, and... But Vinicius Junior is starting to turn it on. His uh, chance conversion rate is, is 17% now, which is okay for a winger. I think if it continues, you can get him up into the 20%, which is which is good for really good for a winger. Striker, you generally want 20 plus um, when it comes to your conversion rate. Uh, in terms of the game itself, so two very different teams to what we've kind of known over the last, let's say, decade. Um, how do you see it playing out? The last two games, uh, not in the league, in the Cups, both have gone to extra time. Not extra time in the league. Didn't need me to say that. Um, I think it'll be a draw. Yeah. I think Madrid are scraping their way through games, and Atletico are very good at staying alive in games, and they have a lot of options going forward, which is not something they're used to. So I'm going to go two-two. Lots of goals, lots of chances. I was going to say the exact same thing. They're going to cancel each other out, but I'm going to be a bit different now. I'm going to feel like I'm going on the whole. Girona. You're going to say something you don't even believe. I love no, it. no, I could, I could see it happen. Obviously, that going um, with Girona win here. Is that where you're going? No, no. <laughs> obviously, I'm on the on the on a winning streak as well. So I feel like maybe possibly like I feel there'll be a lot of goals in it. So I'm going to go. They might edge it three two. That would be exciting. That would be exciting. I think it's Real Madrid for me. Um, I think there's so many great players there as well. Rudiger in those big matches, Camavinga mm. in those big matches, quietly goes about his business. Modric, if you need him. Um, yeah, I think Bellingham will step up as he normally does, and I think it'll be a Real Madrid win. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>